Faith Ashton. I'm the first responder and outreach coordinator for Montgomery County Hospital District. And I have the extreme pleasure of getting to uh, be the MC, for the lack of a better word, for these SAVE reunions. So today we're here to celebrate the life of Mr. Jeff Smith. Uh, Mr. Smith was here on Christmas holiday visiting his family in the woodlands and was out on a family outing on Christmas Eve playing tennis because that's what their family does on Christmas Eve, apparently. <laughs> yeah. um, so we have great weather for it here in Houston. You probably couldn't do that in Colorado. Right. Yeah. Right. So he was out playing tennis um, in the woodlands, started not feeling so great, said, y'all go ahead and play without me. I'm going to take a breather. And uh, his wife just noticed he wasn't getting any better. And so after a short while, she decides, I need to call 911. And uh, as she's on the phone with 911, his progression continues to worsen. He's, he's getting chest pain. He's short of breath. He's still not looking so great. And um, these gentlemen arrive on the fire truck uh, just around the corner, actually, from the park. And uh, as soon as they arrive, Mr. Smith goes into cardiac arrest. And um, the fire department updated with an urgent patient to advise everybody that, uh, that he wasn't looking so hot. And immediately thereafter, updated with that they had CPR in progress. Um, they were able to quickly uh, apply the monitor and defibrillate him, start CPR and our medic unit arrived right behind the, the fire truck and was able to continue care. Before they departed the scene, he already had ROSC, which means he had a return of spontaneous circulation. He already had a pulse. And en route to the hospital, he was even speaking and asking questions to the medic unit. Um, so today, we're, gonna, we're here to celebrate you and that you got to come all the way from Colorado to come back and welcome a new grandbaby. He just, uh, they had a new grandbaby born on Monday? Monday. Monday, brand new baby girl. Baby girl. Baby girl. So we're so happy that he got to be here to welcome his grandbaby to this world and, uh, and share that moment with his family, um, but that we get to meet him and steal a little bit of his time this week so we can say uh, thank you for, for uh, being with us and uh, thank you for coming to see us today and meet these gentlemen and ladies that were involved in your care and, and uh, made that part of that possible. Um, oh, Dr. Rowe made it too, great. Uh, so I'm going to uh, kind of walk you through what happened. You are gonna walk me through the rest of it, so we're gonna fill in the blanks. Who was the 911 caller? Nate. So Nate is Mr. Smith's son. I uh, was also out playing tennis. So Nate, when you called 911, um, you answered uh, to hear um, it was Corey on the phone who took the call. Corey's in the back. The process of, you know, is he is he having chest pain? Um, get aspirin if it's available. I don't think you brought your aspirin with no, you to the tennis <laughs> court. Um, you know, she's that that calm, steady, reassuring voice on the phone through all that process. Had your dad gone into cardiac arrest prior to the ambulance getting there, the fire department getting there, she would be able to tell you how to do CPR over the phone, uh, which is a great service that we have here in Montgomery County. It's emergency medical dispatching, so we're very uh, thankful to have them. So Corey gets to be that voice of reason. Your help is on the way. Stay calm. She probably told you all these things, right? She did. <laughs> She's much nicer to listen to than me, too. She's got that great, calm, steady voice. Yeah. So, Great, and I know it was, it was nice too because um, my mom's a nurse, so she was giving me all the medical terminology to relay back and forth about his condition, and it was uh, it was it was really a reassuring call. Did that make it helpful to you, Corey? That yes. you were okay? Because yeah. I know often we have I to. I know he said dire for running. He's like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> we often have to. They have to use the, the medical lingo first, mm -hmm. and they often have to go back and repeat it. So you probably made her job a little bit easier because. You just had to tell her, and she said, oh, yeah, I know what that means. So, um, Nate, if you would recall for us the events of that day, um, we talked a little bit, but just so everybody can hear what what was going through your mind on Christmas Eve that day. Right. Well, I mean, you want to come stand up here? Prima, prima, prima. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get out of it. All right. Yeah, so it was um, Christmas Eve. It was the morning, and we decided to take a bike ride and go do some tennis playing. It was, it was pretty cold, I remember, but figured we'd warm up once we started playing. And, um, you know, it, it Nothing out of the ordinary, we were just playing my dad. One consequence of uh, sort of all the actions is he lost a bit of his memory from, you know, maybe the day of and the day before. Temporary. So, uh, you know, we, we were able to tell him that we were beating him, even though that wasn't true. <laughs> he was actually, he was beating us pretty badly, but, you know, we were running around a lot, and he just said he had to take a breather, and it didn't seem unusual. I mean, we were working up a sweat, and it was, you know, pretty um, active day, so he sat down and mom and I were just serving back and forth a little bit and um, you know he just didn't seem to be regaining his breath and um, uh, it seemed a little bit unusual but we would talk to him and he was fully able to speak, he said he was feeling 
fine. He said, just give me a couple more minutes. Talked to him again. I remember him saying he uh, actually thinks he was feeling a little bit better. But then, you know, we kept looking at him, and he was still breathing kind of heavy. And um, just didn't seem right. It seemed like he probably should have been catching his breath by that point, not, um, not getting worse, right? So mom and I talked. Somebody. I called my wife because we had cycled over to the park. It was only about a, a mile from our house. And I called my wife and I said, look, can you just come over here so we have the car in case we need to take him to the doctors or something? I didn't, we didn't think it was anything real serious at that point, right? But um, then he kept breathing heavy and we said, look, we need to call 911. So I called 911, um, ran out to the front of the park because I couldn't remember the name of the park, so I wanted to see the sign. So you know, we're at Alden Bridge Park. And it was a matter of, it must have only been five minutes or less, and these guys arrived on the scene. And uh, you know, by that point, a little bit blurry as far as the sequence of events, right? But um, by that point, whenever I came running back from where the sign was, because mom was gonna sit with dad, dad was laying down, and I couldn't tell if he was just laying down because he needed more of a breather, or if, if anything else had happened. I heard you know, mom screaming a bit, so we, we hurried up, we got in there, and these guys went right to work. Um, you know, it obviously it was a very uh, scary thing to see. Nobody wants to be there and see uh, their dad on the ground and, um, you know, going through that. But, um, you know, happy outcome on the, in this case, right? So they went right to work and then the ambulance arrived shortly after. And we didn't know the con his condition because everyone's huddled around and doing their job, right? Um, and, uh, you know, they got him up on the stretcher and put him in the ambulance and I can't remember who it was, if it was one of the uh, ambulance drivers or the, the, the firemen, but they said, he's talking and, and you know, he's, he's alert. And we said, well, you know, thank God. And uh, uh, so then we um, followed, mom went in the uh, ambulance with him. I had my wife had arrived, right? You know, she was on the ground and she didn't know what she was arriving into. So she saw all that too and it was a comforting factor there and she drove me to the hospital and we got there and I remember seeing uh, I said you know Jeff Smith where is he take me to him they told me to wait in the waiting room but you know I called mom and mom came out and got me and went in he was he was up and responsive he for some reason he was looking at his watch I don't know the significance of that but he kept <laughs> laying back just staring at his watch and he was out of it right but um, he, he recognized mom and he recognized me and we were able to tell him we loved him, and he, he got taken away um, to uh, surgery. And they called the doctor in. They went in and gave him uh, two stints, I believe, and they came out and talked to us. And obviously, we're very relieved at this point that he even has a chance because we didn't think he had a chance. Um, and then they came out and they told us uh, the, the doctor and, and, and the staff came out and told us, you know, it went well. We don't know what to expect. There could be organ damage. There could could have pretty severe memory loss. We just, you know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And pretty difficult time calling all the family members, letting them know what happened. And uh, you know, shortly thereafter, um, we were able to see him again. And you know, it was a mixture of emotions because we see him and it's very, uh, very happy to see him being responsive. Very sad to see him in the condition that he was in. Um, very scary because uh, he was kind of repeating the same things over and over again. And, uh, but typical dad fashion, he was very optimistic and he was sitting there joking with us. He was sitting there, um, he, would, he would look at us and he would say, oh geez, sorry for being so melodramatic, guys. And, uh, you know, you want to know what it's like on the other side? <laughs> <laughs> Which was, you know, to see him like that, that's his personality, but then a couple minutes later he'd say the exact same thing, the exact same facial expression, the exact same uh, tone in his voice, so that got pretty scary, right? Um, but, you know, over time that kind of went away and, and he seems to be back to his normal self, which, um, you know, might, might still be a bit forgetful, but he always was. So. <laughs> It was, it was very scary, and thank you for everybody that uh, helped us out. And you've given given us our family, and uh, yeah, given my new daughter on Monday her grandpa. Aww.
know how to tell the story? I think so. <laughs> um, yeah, basically, I'm not going to repeat the stuff that Nate said, but um, first of all, just thank you, everybody that was involved. Um, when Nate went to go uh, see what the name of the park was, and I was sitting with Jeff, and all of a sudden, he just collapsed and fell over. And I couldn't get him down. I'm sitting there thinking, from a nursing standpoint, going through all my CPR, how am I going to do this? What are the signs? What are the symptoms? What is your love when it's a little different? But um, I knew that he was still breathing. I knew he had a pulse. But I couldn't get him down on the ground. And um, it was interesting. There was a, a lady who came by with her dog, and she wanted to know if, there's, if she needed to call 911. Um, I told her, I said, they're on their way. You could hear the, the sirens, but I said, if you can pray, please pray. And she did. And then uh, as soon as we got, as soon as the guys came, they got him on the ground, and that's when he, they hooked him up to the APD, and that's when, I understand, that's when he lost his pulse. <coughs> so they were able to shock him right away, and they were able to start the CPR. And at that point, my son and daughter-in-law and I were all praying and, and just uh, trying to stay out of the way and trying to figure out what's going on. And, and as soon as I got in the ambulance, just like call the church, put him on the prayer list. Um, we're just really, really fortunate. He is, you know, he's a tremendous asset to ourselves and to our community. And, and we just, we love him so much. We just thank you for everything that you guys have done. And, said there's so many times the cliche of every day is a blessing and, and it really is here. We have a three-year-old granddaughter in Pennsylvania. We were back there a few, a few uh, weeks ago and um, just seeing him in a rowboat with her and, and seeing him hold his new grandbaby. And it's just a blessing that he's here, that he's with us and just taking walks and just every day is just wonderful. But, um, Again, thank you for giving him back to us and, and said he, he does joke. He said the only thing that he kind of wonders about was when he was out of it and uh, he was pretty sweaty after playing tennis. He said that would not have been a good sign, you know. <laughs> but um, I don't know if I really have a whole lot more to add. He doesn't remember certain things that day, but then some of it's coming back. And the only thing we've, we've had to deal with a lot of different doctor's appointments and, and different things going on, and, and just as an addendum, um, health-wise, doing real well, um, he did have some chest pain that he'd never had any kind of symptoms before, and his chest pain we just recently found out was from when they put the stents in. They had to put them in the LAD and um, it automatically blocked off some other arteries that were smaller. And so now we know that, you know, what the chest pain is from. But, um, it's just great. So, so his wife and I were talking when we were getting everybody kind of seated, and she said, his doctor said he's less than 2% of, of uh, representation of, of what happened, the, the outcome of the people that go into cardiac arrest um, from, from a condition like yours. And so I said, he's, you're truly a walking statistic. Um, awesome. The church they were calling me the miracle man. Yes, miracle man. Did you? These are miracle go. men here. Miracle man. So I'm going to let you kind of talk about what, you're, what you experienced in this well, whole thing. Of course, I wasn't as emotionally involved as my family and everyone else because I was kind of happily oblivious of the whole affair. And uh, so I, I don't have the same, or really much of any of the remembrances, uh, other than the fact that after the event, I did want to add that, uh, as Nate was talking about our tennis game, I was well in the lead, and yet they made me concede the game because I was unable to finish. <laughs> that's, just, that's the kind of competition we have in our family. Um, but I just, um, as, I, as I told these fellas, uh, you know, I couldn't be more grateful uh, to the, their training, their experience, their dedication. Um, I mean, it all made possible for me to be here today. 
and to uh, experience the same things that my family just told you about, my new granddaughter and, and um, my existing grandkids. And um, as I mentioned during the interview, seeing my Ohio State Buckeyes win the National Football Championship, which didn't go over very well since her parents are Michigan alumni. But um, that was just, I've just had all sorts of wonderful experiences. And as Carol said, uh, every day is a blessing. Uh, really appreciate that. The only other <coughs> remembrances I guess I have of the event is um, when I came to for, for several weeks, my ribs hurt. And now seeing how buff these guys are, <laughs> I can see why with those chest compressions, I mean, you know, they were, they were doing the job. <laughs> so I, I can see now how that all came about. But again, do you remember your hospital stay? Yes. When, when did you start remember, remembering things? I remember bits and pieces even in the ambulance on the way over and I remember bits and pieces um, before I went into surgery and I again bits and pieces in the uh, when I was in the uh, uh, what do you call it the care of the um, intensive care uh, but then I, I guess I remember much more clearly uh, after I got out of intensive care uh, from day to day and the nurses just were wonderful and, and very helpful and all the hospital staff and Obviously, the doctor, um, I just, I saw the doctor who performed the surgery, as I remember briefly, and talked to him briefly, and I just kind of remember snippets of, of the conversation and that, but he obviously said it was successful, and I, I agreed, I'm still there, so. Um, Ooh, Mom, why did you say Dad was asking you if I was yelling at him during the, uh, yeah. During oh, yeah. the actual event? I was Before I was actually loaded into the ambulance, I can remember Nate yelling, you know, encouragement at me, I can kind of make her. We have the ER doctor who yep. saw you at the ER. He might have been yelling at you at the ER. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for a brief period of time. <laughs> He's used to it though, so it's okay. Yeah, now, you had an amazing story, and the beautiful thing about this one is I didn't have to do much because everything was done right before you even got to me. I said, hello, my name's Dr. Monroe. I looked at your EKG. I said, you know, you're having a heart attack, sir. You said, okay. I said, you're not going to remember my name because you're going to be on this damn ER so fast. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. I talked to Dr. Ribsey, and he's like, how does he look? And I was like, great. He goes, really? I said, yeah. He goes, send him up. <laughs> and I was done. But as I learned after the fact, it was a uh as I understand it, we had total blockage of the LAD. 100%. Yeah. Which is, as they call it, the Widowmaker. And it was due to a abrupt rupture of a plaque. So it wasn't a gradual buildup sort of thing. And I guess that's why I never had any um, health problems of that nature in the past. And, and uh, felt fine, really, up until the, <laughs> the moment I passed out. I guess. Well, until I started having difficulty breathing. Um, so yeah. I, you know, it was uh, it was an interesting experience to go through, and I'm just very pleased. My cardiologist I go to now, he he pronounced me uh, what was the quote, Carol? Perfect. That's what he said. Uh, Carol, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's subject to interpretation. <laughs> I think he was talking strictly about uh, medically as good as it it could be. Your ejection, ejection fracture. Oh yeah, my uh, uh, my ejection fraction, which of course I have all these terms I never even understood. <laughs> until recently uh, was I think 40% when I immediately got out of surgery and I had an angiogram uh, just a month ago or less and it's up to uh, 60% so basically I guess is in, almost in the normal range so that's good and just just one more thing too I mean you know it was Christmas Eve and my parents they live up in Colorado up in the mountains kind of the middle of of nowhere 30 minutes away from the nearest hospital and uh, you know as, as sad as it is to see this type of thing happen to your family right here if he hadn't been visiting us for Christmas Eve he wouldn't have made it so right again credit to everybody in this room thank you and as I understand I mean not all not all the um, fire stations and paramedics that have the training that you guys have you guys have specialty training and we're able to do all sorts of things probably that aren't you know, in the normal course of events, uh, I guess you jab something in my shin bone to help uh, yeah. keep the blood from clotting, and that, that ached for a little bit too. <laughs> but uh, but it's all good. It's all good. Thank you guys. So one thing you beat me to it. One thing we always like to talk about when we get to meet special people like you is the chain of survival. And, and one thing your wife had mentioned was 
they live in Colorado in a very small town and they're 30 minutes away from a hospital. And then that hospital isn't even a hospital capable of providing a cardiac cath. So he, if he would have made it to that hospital, uh, then he would have had been flown, you said, to I fly in because it's an hour and a half drive to the closest hospital. To a hospital that could do cardiac care. Here in Montgomery County, we have several facilities that are capable of that, um, and one quite literally up the road from where you were, uh, which is very fortunate. And again, um, the firefighters who have the ability to provide ALS care prior to the ambulance getting there helps us get to our community quicker and start those, those procedures quicker. So we're, we're very blessed to have them here. Uh, again, in the chain of survival, one thing that we always emphasize is that in that chain, if one thing we're missing or one thing we're just a few minutes off, that the outcome couldn't have been the same. So the, the chain of survival aligned perfectly in this situation, perfect, um, to, uh, to, so you could be here today um, and, and meet your grandbaby and we could meet you and shake hands with you. So I was just going to walk you through that chain of survival and bring everybody up here as we go through it so you can meet your chain of survival. So if y'all want to come up here too. So as we discussed, Nate was the 911 caller, and he, he was the one flagging the ambulance down, probably at the side of the road. Um, when you called 911, you spoke with uh, Ms. Corey Brown over here in the back. Corey, if you'll come up. Uh, Corey's been with Montgomery County Hospital District for how long now, Corey? Almost a year. So almost a year. How many days have you had now? This is my second. This is Corey's second. And that's just the people that answer us. She's actually had one more that they didn't write back. So, um, Corey, we're very lucky to have Corey, and uh, she's apparently an angel on the phone. <laughs> so, I have something for you, Corey. <coughs> Thank you. And it, it will stand for a picture. Yeah, I guess. Do you have your kit? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't you ready. I don't know where do you are you looking for? Oh, okay. Hang up, right? She may just stay on the front right, and right. got there. So um, after after the fire department arrived, Corey hung up with you, and these uh, these young gentlemen over here walked up to uh, to start care on your father. So if you gentlemen would come up here. Um, this is, you were truck 104 this day, correct? Yes, so there, none of them are truck 104 anymore. No, one one of them. Two. Okay, two of you. Different shift, though. So, but they were all mismatched people, and somehow these four managed up on the same <laughs> fire, fire truck that day. So um, we have Lieutenant John Cannell over here. If you want to go stand. Lieutenant Cannell, how long have you been with Woodlands Fire Department? Uh, almost 15 years. 15 years. And you, you said you've had one of these just uh, not too long ago. It was like... 19-month-old. 19-month-old, there we go. We also had driver operator uh, Chris Norsworthy, now promoted to lieutenant since, uh, since December, actually, so congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> How long have you been with the department? 12 years. 12 years. And uh, back in the back, his lovely family and two children are back there to celebrate with us today, too. Um, the paramedic that was on the fire truck that took care of you that day, like I said, in the Woodlands, we have one paramedic at least. Usually we have more than one paramedic um, on the fire truck. So that allows for that ALS care to be provided before the ambulance gets there. So with the exception of going to the hospital and a couple other things like pain management, they're capable of doing everything that the ambulance can do in those first few minutes of care. So we're very lucky to have them here in the Woodlands. And um, it was Mr. or Firefighter Eric Seacrest. All right. How long have you been in the Woodlands? About six years. Six years. There you go. Thank you. And last but not least, we have Firefighter Josh Lee, who's also on the fire truck. He's currently working on his ENT intermediate promotion with the fire department, so he'll also be able to provide ALS or uh, advanced levels of care. So that needle that went in your leg, Mr. Lee would be able to do that for you. <laughs> Can we get one with all four? Thankful to have our Woodlands Fire Department. We, uh, we work very closely with them. Uh, just being to the south of, of here. 
Uh, We're very fortunate to have great firemen like these gentlemen up here that we get to work with every day. Fire department arrived and started care on you uh, shortly thereafter the ambulance arrived, uh, probably hot on their tail, I would assume. Yes. Um, and uh, unfortunately, the in charge paramedic, who was the, uh, the young lady of the group of three that arrived, yes. or the group of four, I guess, that arrived, she's on a vacation in Yellowstone this week, so um, it couldn't be here with us. She'll see you in Colorado. She's yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's one of the staff. Oh, is that who did it? Okay, so that's Jolene, and Jolene's been in charge here with us for quite some time um, and has worked her way up through to intimate and in charge, and we're very proud of Jolene. She's an, an excellent employee, and she sends her best wishes. She was not even, she was very actually disappointed. She couldn't be here, so. Maybe we can get a, a number, an email or something. Absolutely. I can write to her Absolutely. Or phone her. Or I can get that for you. So along with Jolene, um, she had Austin Garza in the back. If you'll come up here, Austin. Austin Garza is an attendant paramedic. He's been with the hospital district for a little over two years. A little over two years. And I've had the pleasure of working with Austin before he used to be station mates. He's a great paramedic. He's already ready to promote to in charge. Um, and so excellent care. And uh, for whatever reason, this day we actually had three people riding on the ambulance. Uh, Brad Chambers, if you will come up. And Brad was actually still, I think you were still a new employee orientation, were you not? So yeah, that's actually why he was third on the truck. Brad was a brand new employee here with us at MCHD. Right into the um, fire. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right into the fire. I've been, there. I've been uh, here since November. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, yeah. I remember you used to be a new one. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what all of you And uh, hot on the tail of uh, the ambulance was our <laughs> district supervisor. Again, not far down the road, Chris Goodrich, uh, who's been with the hospital district for several years, has promoted up to the supervisor level. And uh, basically, he comes as the oversight on everything. He has some other equipment he can bring, um, and he provides the experience and just the oversight of, uh, of the call. I think all the hard work was done when she got there, though, huh, Chris? Was he, did you already have ROSD when you got there? Yes, he did. Okay, so <laughs> we just we just made Chris look really good that day. So. <laughs> I did do a call. Did your job <laughs> so um, we only have eight dis or no, sorry, we have more than that. Twelve district supervisors here in Montgomery County. Um, how many state reunions have you had, Chris? Three. Three. So um, just two here. Recently. This is the second one recently. So oh, wow. we're very proud of Chris. He's done great work for the hospital district. have one very special guest today also because we don't normally get to invite this level of person to these state reunions. Um, but <coughs> today we have the ER physician that received you and took care of you, as he said very briefly in the ER. Um, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Monroe is with the Baylor College of Medicine Fellowship Program um, and works closely with us here at Montgomery County Hospital District. So we have a very close relationship with Dr. Monroe. If you'll come up here. All right. He's very tall. I'm in the back of this photo, you know. <laughs> 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 In, in our chain of survival for, for your um, emergency that day. Give them the opportunity to talk about their experiences. We're going to give you some time afterwards to, to chat with them. Um, we don't, I told you, we don't ever get to meet these, these, these people in these situations. We, uh, we typically, we come in, like you said, we're, we're working, and uh, we scoop you up, take you to the hospital, we don't ever say, hi, hi nice yeah. to meet you, and it's been nice to meet you. And so this is a great opportunity for these men and women to do that. But um, is there anything that y'all would like to add to this. Christmas Eve, so I remember <laughs> the reason why this call stood out so much to me, I'm gonna stand over here so I can look at Chris. So um, was that it was Christmas Eve. And uh, and it's such a tragic event potentially. 
that happened on such an important family holiday and, and what an amazing outcome and, uh, that this was and positive outcome and to be involved in that care. So I knew that was very special to our medic crews um, and to the doctors that got to be part of such an amazing event um, with such a great outcome. And Because um, I can only imagine coming in for a holiday on something like Christmas Eve and having to deal with such an emergency. So um, emergency services unfortunately doesn't stop for holidays. It's 24-7. 365 and we're very lucky and, and blessed that these gentlemen and, and ladies were at work this day. Um, so if y'all had anything to add, we can let you talk. No? Anything? It, it amazes me the extensiveness of the network of all the people that contribute. It just, you know, it's kind of mind-boggling, you know, and, and of course we haven't even seen, we've just seen the, the surface of it, but of course all the nurses and other surgeons and doctors and hospital staff uh, I mean it's just an amazing network and it has been repeated a couple times everything fell into place everyone did their job just perfectly and I guess I'm the result <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have something for you and uh, I wanted to give that to you while you're standing up here it's empty but that's because we had to get you here first to get the picture for it uh -huh. so um, we have a plaque for you and this is for you to take home it's everybody's names on it, and I will be sending you a picture. So if everybody wants to... Thank you. Thank you.